Hi everyone, it's John, it's Tuesday, and I have another book review for you. This week I want to talk about a book that I finished recently. It is not a novel, and it's not a book of history, which I know takes up most space on this channel review-wise. It's a book of popular science, especially um, a book about popular science by a primatologist, maybe one of the best-known primatologists working in the United States today. Um, this book is by Robert M. Sapolsky, whose name you might recognize from another book he published more recently called Behave, which is all about human behavior. And uh, this is called A Primate's Memoir, A Neuroscientist's Unconventional Life Among the Baboons. Is that word baboons? Yes, baboons. I found this in our local library for, I think, a dollar or so. I recognized Robert M. Sapolsky's name, thought it might be something along the lines of behave, that is a, a sort of a rehashing of, of the work he's done and the scientific inferences that he's made are, uh, based off of that work, but instead it's something rather different. It's much more what it sounds like <laughs> instead of what I should have expected it uh, to, uh, to, to be just because of being somewhat familiar with its name. My, my encounter with the book, as I sort of already hinted, was, was sort of a, a misalignment of, of personal expectations of what I was expecting from its author versus that author's attempt at writing a popular, engaging, kind of a Bildungsroman about his initiation into the world of field work with African baboons. Based solely off what I heard about Behave, the book that I talked about, uh, Behave's full title, by the way, is called Behave, the Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst. Based off of what I heard, I bought this sort of mistakenly thinking that there would be more discussion of his research and the conclusions that he's drawn from it. If you're familiar with Robert Sapolsky from his numerous YouTube lectures, you know that he is quite professorial in the way that he carries himself. He has rather a bone-dry sense of humor. And because it's really easy and accessible to read and, and almost funny in parts, it seems like a primate's memoir was almost written by a completely different author altogether. Sapolsky became entranced with apes, especially gorillas, during his first visit to the Museum of Natural History, where he immersed himself in the natural history dioramas. Over time, his interests would vary slightly to baboons, particularly the problems that baboons answered about human health when we look at how factors like social support networks and dominance were correlated with their long-term health outcomes. Sapolsky was becoming increasingly interested in neuroendocrinology and especially his thesis that the concentration of stress hormones in baboons was positively correlated with their health problems, especially negative health outcomes. Instead of discussions of the science or its relevance for human health, Sapolsky continues his narrative throughout the book to, to sort of roll out a series of stories about the people and events and ideas that he encountered during his travels all over Africa. And that's basically what the book is about, his, his field work in several African countries. Some of the stories he has to tell you will really curl your toes, like the several times he seems to have barely escaped with his life. Uh, for example, he was in Uganda at the very end of the 1970s, and this was the very beginning of his graduate career. Uh, at the very end of the 1970s, 78, 79, when Idi Amin had made a poor military decision to invade his neighboring country and got 
ousted out of office and didn't really go quietly into that good night, as we shall say. Uh, and they, they, they if, if you ever want to not sleep at night, you should just Google Idi Amin and see some of the horrible, horrible things that he uh, is accused of having done, including eating people. So he was he was there for that. Um, he was also in the Sudan. This was before Sudan broke up into Sudan and South Sudan in uh, eight years ago, 2011. Uh, Sudan has been fighting uh, tribally uh, for generations, and Sudan's eventual breakup eight years ago was because of that long fighting. But he was there, like I said, in the 80s, early 90s, I think is when the, the book wraps up. I think it was published in 2001, so about with 10 years of hindsight or so. There are other moments which are just um, sort of funny, um, like when he tells stories of, of baboon behavior. They seem at times really childlike, at times really vicious and and cruel and mean, kind of like human beings, surprisingly enough. And other times are really the education in cross-cultural understanding, like the African man in the book. He just tells the story in passing, who had never been on an elevator before, and who thought that pressing two and then three on the uh, elevator pad would take him to the fifth floor. Which makes perfect sense, unless you've ever been on an elevator before. Uh, I guess had I known what this was, I, I, I might not have picked it up. Um, it's, it's far from what I would call a disappointment, but it's just that the content and the tone weren't really what I was expecting. Sapolsky is a lot better of a storyteller than I would have imagined from just watching his online lectures. And I wish there was some way to write about academic high science and the conversational register that Sapolsky manages to pull off in this book. But uh, that, that would really be the kind of accidental discovery that I wouldn't mind making one bit. But as it is, though, it really is just a, a series of stories, sometimes riveting, sometimes droll, that don't really shed too much light on the work that he was doing at the time, which is ideally what I would have liked to have found in the book. If you know about Sapolsky or read the book, or if you've read Behave, I know I have uh, gotten on Amazon and taken a deep dive into a few of the chapters and uh, as soon as I can find it on a used book site or half price books for something less than $25, which hopefully won't take much more than six months, maybe 12 months, I will snatch it up and eager, eagerly devour it because it seems absolutely fascinating. This was less than absolutely fascinating, but still interesting to read. Robert M. Sapolsky's A Primate's Memoir. Uh, a Neuroscientist's Unconventional Life Among the Baboons. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.